Hello, what's up everybody? In this video, we are going to look at the second problem from today's lead code bi-weekly contest number 34. It is called number of ways to split a string. We have been given a string s which consists only 0 or and 1s. We need if we can split s into three non-empty substrings s1, s2, s3 such that if we concatenate these three th strings s1 plus s2 plus s, s3 we should get the original string s from the result and we need to return the number of ways we can split s such that the number of ones in each of those substrings that are s1, s2, s3 must be same and return the answer modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 Let's see what we can do or what we can observe. As uh, we have a string S and there are three parts. We need to divide it into three parts S1, S2 and S3. It should, these three parts must contain equal number of ones. So the first thing which we can observe, the number of ones present in the string s must be a multiple of 3. If the number of 1s is are not a multiple of 3 then there is no way we can divide this string into 3 such substrings. Okay, the first check is this one and now let's see what we can do by using one example which is this one. Let's uh, just uh, write it down. Is one double zero one triple zero one double zero one triple zero one zero one one zero one and a double zero double zero one double zero. So if we see the number of ones in this string is number of ones is equal to six. So there must be must be must be ways where we can divide the string into three substrings such that the number ones are equivalent, which would be equal to six divided by three, equal which is two. So all the parts that are s1, s2, and s3 must contain two ones. Okay. Now there is uh, one thing which we need to observe here. Our string s1 must start from index zero. And our st uh, string S3 must end at index n minus 1 if n is the length of substring. So S1, S1 should be starting from somewhere here and S3 must end at here. Now we need to consider all the cases where we can end the string S1 and the string S2 as well. As we have already mentioned that in, in S1 we must be must be having number of ones in the total string divided by three number of ones. So in original string we are having six ones. So in S1 we must be containing two ones. So we traverse along our string and reach to the points where we have found two ones. This is the point where I have found two ones. And so our string S1 cannot end at any index lesser than this one, which is 3. It must end at at least this index. And if we see the S3 here, it also should start at index uh, at most this one. Suppose it is J, as it must include at least it, it must include two ones. Now let's see uh, how in a uh, there how many ways there are in which we can end our s1 the string s1 if you observe as the number of ones is s1 should be must be two so we can either we can end the string s1 at this point or we can end s1 at this point or at this point or at this point but we cannot end our string s1 as at this point because then it would be including another one but this must be included in the substring uh, s2 so we can these are the four ways 
where we can end our string s1 and the point where we are ending our string s1 is the point where the string s2 will be starting okay so let's consider consider the case consider the case where our s1 is ending at this point now our s2 will start at this point now again we will go along with our we will be traversing our string from this point and we will reach to the points where we have found two more ones because s2 must also contain two ones so at this point we have we see we see that we have uh, found two ones we had started our string s2 from this point now what are the ways or how many ways there are at which we can end our string s2 so we can end the string s2 at this point at this point or we can end it this point or at this point but we cannot add s2 at this point as it would then be consisting another one which we cannot have as s2 can only contain two ones which is number of ones in the whole string divided by three so there are three ways in which we can uh, end three ways that is three places where we can end the string s2 the total number of ways we can have this is the given division such that we are having the number of ones would be 4 into 3 which is equal to 12 so our problem now reduces down to something where we need to found a find out two gaps that are where our gap consists the number of zeros we can have after we have found suppose uh, we, we found uh, x number of ones in our total substring so the point where we have uh, we have found x by 3 ones that is the, this point now we need to find out the length of consecutive zeros number of consecutive zeros we are having after we have found x by 3 ones if we see in this example the consecutive zeros we are having is 3 and uh, so the number of ways or the number of places where we can end the string s1 is 4 and then after doing this step we will again try to reach to the point where we have uh, found another x by 3 ones in this case we found we found out more x by 3 ones at this point so we will again find out the number of consecutive zeros after this point and which are 2 in this case and there are three ways uh, we can at the three places where we can end our string s2 so our answer would be 4 into 3 as i have mentioned it earlier so we need to find out those two gaps which are the number of consecutive zeros we are having in between and suppose the, in the first gap we are having number of consecutive zeros as z, z1 and in second gap we are having number of consecutive zeros z2 then the answer would be z1 plus 1 into z2 plus 1 and yeah take a modulus of it yeah, this would be the answer now there is one special case where we are having zero number of ones in our, in our string s yes. because this is the example which is also given in the test case now let's just try to figure out this one so we can end our string s1 at this point suppose we uh, have ended s1 at this point so this is s1 now we can end our s2 this point or at this point there are only two places because we cannot end s2 here as s3 cannot be empty string s1 s2 and s3 are all known empty strings so there are two ways if we end s1 here and suppose if we had ended if we had ended s1 at this at this place now let's see the number of ways we can have number of uh, ways we can end s2 so there is only one place where we can end our s2 so we will just add one to it it is 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 now let's see a case where we are having 5 consecutive zeros now suppose we have ended our s1 at 
this place. Now the ways or the places where we can end as two are one, two, three. So we have taken this three into cons in our consideration. And suppose if we end S1 at this place, now the number of ways where number of places where we can end our string S2 are 1 and 2. So 3 plus 2. And in the third case, if we have if we decide to end S1 at this place, then there is one play only one place where we can end our S1. So it is 3 plus 2 plus 1. So if you observe in this special case where we are only having zeros in our string S. If the length of the string is n, then the answer would be sum of first n minus 2 natural numbers. So as here the length was 5, so the answer is 3 plus 2 plus 1. And in this case the length length here is 4, so the answer is 2 plus 1. So that these are the cases which we need to consider. Let's look at the board now. Here first I have found out the number of ones in our string. If it is not divisible by 3, there is no way we can divide it into such possible uh, combination. We return 0 here. And if we see the ones, number of ones are 0, so this is the case where the answer is the sum of first n minus 2 natural numbers, which is this. Okay, now let's move ahead. So now I am uh, trying to reach to the place where I have reached the first gap, that is, I found n by x by 3 number of ones. Total number of ones is ones. And I am allowed to have ones divided by three ones in one sub so in one substring that is in any of s1 or s2 s3 which are I am storing in ones allowed. So the point where I have reached, I am storing the current number of ones which I have encountered to this point is current ones. So I have, if I see that current ones is equal to ones allowed, now I am trying to find the number of consecutive zeros I am having after this one, and uh, then I am. Um, at multiplying my answer by zeros plus one as I've explained in the explained it earlier as I explained it earlier and then I'm trying to reach to the second gap I'm a, I again initialized my current ones to equal to zero and I'm incrementing current ones whenever I found uh, whenever I, uh, I find another one and uh, the point where I have reached to the second gap that is the second day, second gap which I've explained then I count the number of consecutive zeros I am having at that point. Again, I am multiplying, multiplying my answer by zeros plus one. And yes, also take the modulus of it whenever you multiply the answer so that it does not overflow or it does not get uh, it does not for overflow integer range. Yeah, at the end I am returning the answer. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like our videos and do subscribe to our channel. In the next few videos, CP Addict A will be explaining the problem 3 and 4. So, yep, take care and sayonara.